So, Resident Evil Village. The game where everyone goes wild about an insanely tall vampire lady. And I just fell in love with the creepy horror doll. Meet my darling, Angie Beneviento. So, I'm not entirely sure what she is, but she is a mixture between a ventriloquist doll and an ordinary marionette puppet thing. So I had the problem that I wanted to attach her hat with some elastics, but still have the mouth opening part of the ventri ventriloquist doll. Gosh, what a word. So the only way for me was to add some straws to have two tunnels where I could fiddle the elastic through and then sculpt the jaw separately to have both worlds done. So basically I made the main part of the hat out of aluminium foil and then covered everything with air dry clay. I'm not sure what it is with me, the air dry clay and the horror dolls, but normally I don't really like air dry clay. But for this project, I really like it. I love it. It's, it's a strange thing. Yeah. In the end, I bought four packs that were one kilogram each. Because I thought, let's be s more safe than sorry, and uh, yeah, it ended in all the four packages being used for this doll. So, she is quite a heavy girl. And while we are speaking about weight, why not throw in her other measurements. When I tried to calculate how big she should be to be life-size, I figured if Donna Beneviento, her owner, is around 170 meters, then she would be more or less a meter tall. And I thought that would be quite big, and I thought, ah, such a big doll, where do you want to put it? And then I sculpted the head, thinking it would be smaller. When I was finished with the head, it measured around 12 centimeters, and with the strange proportions she, she had, we were at a height of around about 90 to 59 centimeters. So you can say she is life-sized. Yay! <laughs> now I not only have a damn heavy girl, but a quite big one too. <laughs> you Yeah. The sculpting process involved me going back and forth while deciding how to do her eyes. And then I remembered that every time I use epoxy clay, the le last bits that I can't use for anything else, I press into a mold uh, that is made for BJD eyes. So, this was quite the perfect fit. I stiffed it with some air dry clay because her pupils are teeny tiny little holes. And I don't think that there is any hole that could measure up to this. Yeah, and because you can see her teeth, I sculpted her teeth. What you can't see very clear, because I'm mostly off focus, so sorry. For 
the option that the mouth will cl open and close, at least a little bit. I had to poke a wooden dowel through her jaw and then sculpt the jaw separately, also on a wooden dowel, so that it will fit as best as possible. It's a little bit looser than on the original doll, but I hope you can forgive me. It was the first time I sculpted something like this. And then there was the problem because I needed to add something, another dowel or wire or whatever, that can it goes through her head outside of the back of the head and is yeah used to move her jaw uh, jaw that had to uh, or for this there had to be some room and that was why the elastic couldn't go <laughs> through the middle of the head so uh, it it was a bit complicated in the end she had quite a uh, kind of a tunnel of the for the mouth and yeah she looked very strange in crashes the skeleton that I made out of wire out of a very stiff and firm wire and I fiddled in the elastic because I doubt it would be possible to make this later and then I bulked everything out with aluminium foil again tried to save the elastic as good as possible so that it won't be caught by any of the clay at all yeah and after some back and forth you may end with something like this. Isn't she a beauty already? Yeah. What I didn't mention, I uh, textured the head a little bit with aluminium foil. And after everything was dried, I could put in the jaw and um, close the uh, this with some... Uh, no, not polymer clay, with some air dry clay too. And with that, the main portion of the hat was done for now. It was time to care for the body. I first put on a layer of um, air dry clay just to hold everything together, and then made the details like yeah rib cage and boobies and i don't sculpt the boobies on camera because i was a little bit yeah i felt weird doing it and after the front of her body was sculpted i measured more or i eyeballed the middle of it and just poked a line with one of my sculpting tools. You will see why later. And because our little girl is quite big and heavy and hard to handle, I made most of the bodies, uh, body things um, off camera. I just wanted to show you some little details. Then I decided to reinforce the whole neck part with some epoxy clay because she only had one day at this moment to dry, but the neck was coming loose already. So I again thought, let's make it safe and everything will be fine. So epoxy clay it was, and then I sculpted her little yeah, choker part thing 
out of the uh, epoxy clay too. So just to have it a little bit more safe and yeah, the pressure from the head may have d um, destroyed the whole sculpting otherwise. And that would be something I would be very, very, very sorry if that would happen. At this point I decided let's skip some details and try to get her finished in time because it's currently Saturday evening and tomorrow I will go to my mom for a week. And this all was on Thursday, so at this moment I thought mm, I could finish her. On Friday I thought I will never be able to finish her. On Saturday I finished her, so let's don't think about all of this too much. But that was the reason why I decided all the details on her necklace thing were a little bit too much for me. For the hands I skipped on something that would require more effort again. From the start I thought about giving her jointed fingers because on the pictures it looks as if she had them. And yeah, I thought about how to make it because her hands are still quite small at last for my sausage fingers. <sighs> and then I decided uh, let's let's just give her entirely sculpted hands and call it a day. Because at this point I already was quite tired of sculpting. I have to say I started her on Sunday and I ended her on Saturday. So she was done in one week only. And that is something I'm quite proud of. There may be still some parts of her that uh, didn't have the time to dry, but they will dry now. I'm very confident they will. And if they don't, well, <laughs> not my fault. I gave her enough time or something like that. So with her hands done too, I finished the rest of the sculpting job, which was, yeah, her th things at the arms. Gosh, I can't say anything more anymore. And then I mixed the color and put it on her. And yes, I thought her falling over was quite a hilarious. That is why you see it again in real time. Ta-da! So, for the paint job it was first her skin color, then um, the other side that resembles the moon from the whole Beneviento crest. And yeah, for that I mixed it a little bit darker and with a bit more blue and put that on there too. And I did the same parts that I do on the face on the body too, but I did it off camera because it's a lot more work. What a big surprise by such a big doll. So. Yeah. After that, it was finally time for a lot of detail work. So I had to put on all the shadows that you could see and um, to blend everything out was a bit of a pain in the... Uh, yeah, because especially on the textured side it wasn't going anywhere. So in the end I put on some uh, soft pastels. I learned something from doing art dolls. So 
that blended it out a little bit better. And I basically didn't care for a lot more than the shading around the eyes because I was already planning to do a wash over the whole doll. What means a wash is watered down acrylic paint with some dish soap so it will sink into the crevices and darken them and the rest of it you will wipe off. I did it on the skin colors. I didn't do it at the darker colors so that they are more intense. And because of this being insanely messy, I just show you this teeny tiny little bit of the process. Then it was finally the time that I waited for all the time, joining her head and her body. And I noticed I should have made the neck part a little bit smaller, but mistakes were done. So I wasn't able to undo it now. Now comes the explanation for the center line. I put some glue into it and just sticked some of the uh, lace into the middle. And then later I glued it partly or every little part onto her body off camera. Then she needed some hair and I found some linen that I had laying around for ages and I thought it would look cool because it's linen yarn and um, yeah, kind of strappy, kind of uh, yeah, disgusting looking exactly what I needed for her. And I just glued it on there, put it a little bit in an updo motion thing and I couldn't be bothered to care for her back because no one will ever see it because her veil is glued onto her. And to keep it in place I put the, ri uh, the rest of the elastic around her head and it looked so kind, uh, so funny. And yeah, then I put her veil onto her for a moment. And yeah, after I removed the elastic, the sun was falling so nicely onto her face that I made the first picture of her and posted it. And that was it for the Friday and the rest was done all in one day. So sewing her skirt, coloring it, glazing her, etc, etc. Everything that still had to be done was done. And finally, she was done. And I have to tell you, I really enjoyed making her. And as spooky as she looks, I am quite attached to her because, let's face it, I did her from start to finish and that is something quite cool. My father was not so happy when I told him that she and Annabelle are kind of his granddaughters but who cares. So there was one picture for reference to her size and the rest is just some beauty shots and some with her let's say sister Annabelle. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know what you think about her. Have a nice time. Bye.